Okay, welcome to Teal House Farm. It's me and Ivy this morning, and we're going to the butcher shop to pick up our goats and two sheep that we had processed, and we're going to bring them home and show you what how much meat we got with all that, and then I'll break down the costs too, and then I'm going to share a recipe. We're going to have some lamb for dinner tonight, so uh, join us along for the journey. You ready, Ivy? Yes. Okay, we got it all sorted out. I'm gonna show you what we got super fast and we're gonna throw it back in our deep freeze. Okay, so I tried to organize by types. You can see we have kebab, lamb kebab meat. I have three of those. And we have two sets of lamb ribs. By the way, we took in two sheep and one goat. And uh, we didn't get very much ground meat because I wanted almost all of the cuts, which didn't leave very much left um, for the ground meat. But we have three and a half pounds of ground meat. And then we have um, some different kinds of steaks. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven steaks. And these steaks um, are uh, two in a pack. We got a whole bunch of lamb chops. I have them piled up here. Um, and this is how most people eat the lamb anyway. And then we have some nice roasts. These are probably about a pound and a half to two pound roasts. Um, got, let's see, we got three uh, rolled roasts. We got two neck roasts. Uh, there's another roll roast down there. A bunch of lamb stew meat, which these are all um, about probably about a pound. I'll have to actually weigh some of these to see so I can do the correct math. And then we have some uh, lamb legs. Got uh, four of those. Those are pretty large packages. I'm not quite sure how to cook those. So if you have a recipe to suggest, that'd be great. And we have, um, so all of that, this is all of our lamb meat. And then over here is from our goat. Now we butchered a dairy goat um, kid, not a meat goat. So there won't be quite as much meat here as if we had actually had a meat breed. The one that we butchered is a Sanin Nubian cross. So she was tall, but she was skinny. But we didn't want to keep her for milking because her mother is a very bad nanny goat will not nurse her kids we did not want to send or spread those genes around so we sent this one to the butcher so we have two um, rolled roasts for the goat and we have a bunch of kebab meat here a few chops not nearly as many as the sheep because again this was a pretty skinny goat and then these are the little steaks that we got from her and then we have two legs a neck roast and um, the ribs back there I'm going to tally up how many pounds this is and then come back and I'll give you a little bit of the math so we can figure out what it actually worked out to cost wise, especially the goat. I do not anticipate that this is very cost effective. Um, I think this is going to be pretty expensive meat, but it is still pretty cool that we raised it ourselves. It's going to give us a chance to try goat and if we like it, we're going to look into some meat breeds for the spring where it'll be much more cost effective. So hold tight for a minute. Ivy's going to help me get this all packed away and we'll do some math. Okay, I have done the math, and uh, first the number shocked me, and then I did more research, and I realized that these numbers are actually better than I thought. So, but Goobs is helping me here. Say hi. 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 At first, so what I anticipated would happen is that we would be basically upside down, meaning we it would cost us more to have raised these animals and get them butchered than it would have been had I gone out and just bought the separate meat 
of comparable quality, meaning from us from a local farm. And what I actually found out was that not only was it cheaper than me going to a local farm and buying it, but it was still cheaper than me actually buying it in a store. Now I will say I we, buy it. we do not live in an area where it's easy to find lamb or goat. So I was looking at store prices that are about an hour to two hours away from us, looking at the big cities like St. Louis, because that's where the you know Everybody is okay. They're playing a game. That's where the uh, like Islamic and Jewish populations are, where are buying large quantities of lamb and goat, and then you get into like kosher and halal. So it's just pricier anyway because of those reasons. But still, it's cheaper than if I went to go buy. It. But let's actually talk the numbers. So I got. I'm gonna look down because I have them in front of me. So I separated it out. The sheep, we brought two sheep in, and these sheep we did not breed on our farm. So I bought bottle lambs locally, and they cost me $125 each, okay? And then and then it also cost me $125 each to butcher, so that's $500 in. Now, we did feed them a little bit of grain during the year, and then we also, at the very end, the last two weeks, we had to give them some supplemental hay. And I, I estimate that we spent about $106 on the two together in feed costs. It's a little bit hard to, to estimate because they are thrown in with the big herd. We still have our milk goats out there. So I just looked up averages online of what I think they would have eaten um, and then divide that by what we were buying and how much the fee bag feed cost us and how much the hay. So I feel like that's a pretty reasonable estimate. So that means total in two sheep is $606 that I put into them before I got the meat back. And then we got 57 pounds of meat total. And that comes out to about ten and a half dollars a pound. Now, if you are uh, somebody who's never eaten lamb before, and you're just thinking meat prices as far as pigs or chickens or beef go at your local grocery store, that number sounds shocking. Those are all of my numbers. <laughs> but when I looked online locally, I found that lamb in the stores costs anywhere from eight dollars to seventeen dollars a pound depending on the cuts so my average is ten and a half dollars a pound that includes all cuts including the ground lamb which is the cheapest at the store that's about eight dollars a pound all the way up to like the legs which are more like seventeen dollars a pound at the store now the goat like i said this is not a meat breed she's a dairy breed we did not anticipate a lot of meat our choices basically were try to sell her or to send her to the butcher you're okay we decided not to sell her for two reasons one, selling animals is a hassle, unless that's all that you do, because you can't advertise them like anywhere. It's on social media, it's not allowed. Um, and then um, people waste your time. It's stressful, I hate it. I hate selling things off the farm. People waste so much of my time. And um, and so the second reason we didn't sell her, because sometimes then what we do is we just, like we know other local farmers and homesteaders, we'll just sell it to one of them if it's something we don't want. We've done that before. But I didn't feel right selling her because we know that her mama is a very bad mama and we don't want to give that problems to somebody else. Like I would not feel right about that. And so, cause if you're selling a baby, you know, doe, you're gonna anticipate and a milk breed that these people are going to want to breed her and milk her. And just knowing that she's going to be a lot of trouble, unless I was selling her to somebody who was very experienced, I would just, I would feel like I was, feel like I wouldn't have my scruples about me. It would not be kind to do that. So we decided we would send her to the butcher and see if we like goat meat, right? And so the what we ended up was, was only 23 pounds of meat off of her. Like I said, she's not very big, very skinny, very tall, but very skinny. Um, but for her, there's not very many costs involved. Okay, so we keep the dairy goat specifically for milking. So the the kid that the dairy, the kids that the dairy goat have are kind of like a almost like a byproduct in order to be able to milk. So there really is not any cost involved. We um, she basically ate pasture, um, got just a little bit of grain. So I anticipate her feed costs only about thirty dollars for this year because she's really she basically was just out on pasture. So that's um, plus the butcher cut which was one hundred and twenty five. Okay, just a second. So that's one hundred and fifty five dollars in at 23 pounds comes out to about $6.70 a pound, which is actually cheaper than the sheep, which surprised me a little bit, but you have to remember, we didn't purchase her. Had we purchased her, it would have been like $12 a pound. And um, when I looked online, the closest thing I could find um, was that goat was running about $13 a pound on average. If you're buying from a local farm, it was more like 16, 17, up to $20 a pound on average. So we actually, even though she was tiny, 
We actually got a pretty good deal on our meat. Okay, crisis averted, Isla. It's all changed into dry clothes. Ready to go. Okay, so the question is, what would we do differently? I think we learned, yeah, we learned some lessons and let me share those with you to keep our costs down more next time. So the biggest one is we were feeding, we were feeding grain um, all summer long, which really was not necessary. I just had never raised sheep before and I just wanted to make sure that I didn't raise these skinny minis that were gonna have no meat on them. So I fed grain all summer long, really not necessary. Um, we know now that, do that. We know now that our pasture is very good for goats and sheep. Um, it's just the kind of stuff that they like. They really don't need extra grain in the summer. P maybe fill them out at the very end on the little feed pellets, which, like the grain we were giving them. Um, but they really didn't need it in the summer. So we could save some money there. We would have butchered them just a few weeks earlier. We will aim better for when, for breeding season, for the age that we're buying them at, because they were ready right at the time it was deer season and butchers are not allowed to be processing deer and livestock at the same time. So we had to hang on to them a couple weeks longer than we wanted to. So then we had to feed them hay. So we had to buy hay because we can't cut hay um, where we're at and we don't have a tractor to do that. And so that added a little bit of cost. The other thing I would do, uh, since I was not sure the amount of meat I was going to get back, I did not request the extras. I didn't get the soup bones, I didn't get the organs, things like that, because I just, like, I didn't want to get so much that I couldn't store it. That was kind of one thing I was worried about. I only have one deep freezer, and buying a second deep freezer is not in the budget. So. I'll, Everything fit fine. Um, I think we could have fit a little bit more. I do not think we could have fit, if I had gotten the extras for all three animals, I don't think I could have fit it in there for this year. But it's something to keep in mind for the future. It would have dropped down my cost per pound. Those soup bones are worth something, okay? They've got a little bit of meat on them and they'll be great for making just stock and things like that. And um, the internal organs, as gross as it sounds, like the liver and stuff are still good for cooking and using for certain recipes. And we try to use up everything. We don't like wasting anything. So that would have dropped my cost per pound as well. Obviously having our own sheep that we breed ourselves will drop our cost um, somewhat. Depend it depends how you run your operation. It's not really free because you have to keep the the breeding pair and you have to feed them as well so it can get a little tricky about whether or not that saves you money it just depends how you're running it and if we look into that we'll show you more about what we do since the, the goats give us milk as well I feel like the the kids if we don't if we want to keep them for meat are kind of freebies because we're thinking about costs for the milk not the kids but if you have a meat breed that gets a little bit different all right, so anyway, that's enough of me jabbering. I'm gonna go ahead and put this troublemaker down for a nap with the baby, because he keeps grabbing snacks. No snacks, Mitter. No snacks. No snacks. And then we are going to make uh, lamb patties, which is a recipe tried and true that I grew up on. Um, eating lamb, and I'll share that with you and um, just show you how our farm-raised lamb came out. We're gonna need a medium sized bowl and one pound of ground lamb meat. And then to that, we're going to add one egg and a cup of breadcrumbs. Now, if you don't have breadcrumbs, you can use cracker crumbs. You can actually even use oatmeal works fine. So a little bit flexible here. And then we're going to add our pre-made spice mixture. I have this listed below to make it a little bit easier than listing them all off right here. And it really gives great flavor. I love the flavor of these lamb patties. And then a half cup of tomato sauce. You could also use ketchup if you don't have tomato sauce. We're gonna go ahead and mix this up really well with our hands. It's a lot like making a meatloaf. So you want to make sure everything is mixed in really well. Nobody wants a bite of too much spice. So get that really worked together with your hands. I'm going to cook this into my 12 inch cast iron, which I'm going to add some salt and I've added a big glob of lard. Make some patties and go ahead and dip them in flour on both sides. It gives a nice crisp outer coating. And then we're going to add them to our hot oil and salted pan. This is what we're having tonight. We've got some spaghetti squash from the garden, some green beans and our patties. Everybody really liked these. Nobody complained, which is a good thing when you have a lot of kids to feed. Um, we dip them in ketchup, but you could also use barbecue sauce or more tomato sauce if you wanted to. Which go? Mommy. That's the sheep. Oh, sheep. What sheep? The white one of them. The white one? The sausage almost. They Mommy, just like beef and sausage. Take a picture of me eating a big uh, bite. Okay, take a big bite. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Alright. The 
Just like I remember. Just like you remember? Yeah, pretty good. What's it taste like? Mm. It's kind of, it's very close to hamburger, but it has like a little bit of a sausagey flavor. A sausagey But hamburger. it's very like tender and lean. It's good. You like it? It does not have like a gamey taste at all. It's like it's very mild. Awesome.